Okay. So they're apparently ripping up my street right now. I'm not able to film during the weekdays because there's so much construction. So right now there's a big metal plate outside that cars will run over. So if you hear like this beating sound like that, it's just that, it's not you going crazy. There it is. <laughs> Hi, I'm Olivia and I'm the Witch of Wonderlust here on YouTube and on Instagram. Today I'm doing a video all about frequently asked questions about love magic. This probably is going to be a pretty quick video. I just wanted something out uh, that was a little informative and also something that wasn't too crazy, time consuming for editing and all that jazz. So before I dive straight into this, I just want you to keep in mind that whatever I'm telling you is straight out of my own experience, my own journey, and all of the information that I have personally gathered from my own research experiences and from the teachers that I have learned from. So I'm not a professional practitioner. Find out where you stand by doing a bunch of research, cross-reference everything that you find on this topic, including my own videos. So now that that is out of the way, I'm gonna go straight into one of the most common questions that I get on love magic. This is one of those questions that they ask you and they want a simple yes or no answer, but there is so much to unpack in this one question. And that is, is love magic black magic? For some of you know where I stand on the term black magic, but for those of you who don't, there is no such thing as black magic. There's actually a lot of like racial connotations to it. So personally, I really, really don't like the term. Also, there's no such thing as good or bad magic. Magic is a part of nature. Nature is neither good or bad, it just is. Magic itself is the act of manipulating natural energies, more specifically to influence a situation. So really, it's it's there's no such thing as bad magic and good magic. Magic just is energy that you use. So it's the intention of the practitioner. However you use the magic, it's your intention is what may be good or bad. Same thing like a hammer. You can use the hammer to build your dog a cute little dog house outside in the yard, or you can beat the living shit out of somebody. Does that make the hammer good or bad? No, it's the intention of the person using the hammer. I'd really like to thank Anna Luisa for sponsoring this video. I always wear my favorite Aries earrings, and then I have an evil eye ring. They're actually offering a 15% discount, and it only goes till February 10th. So if you want to check that out, I'll leave a link down below. I love all of their jewelry. I have these three beautiful pieces that I will be sending to my sister-in-law for Valentine's Day, so I hope that she enjoys those because, man, as a mom of toddlers, that woman deserves nice things. I've worked with Ana Luisa for quite some time now, and there's a reason for that. They use 100% recycled gold in their products, and they've completely eliminated the retail markup. I can tell you from experience that their jewelry is quality. I wear their jewelry almost every single day, their products come from the same jewelers as Tiffany and Louis Vuitton. Like I said, I'll leave a link down below if you are interested in grabbing any of these pieces for yourself or somebody special in your life for this Valentine's Day or any time in the future. Thanks again to Ana Luisa for supporting this channel, and now back to the video. But Olivia, what about the threefold law? This is a thing, is that being a spiritual practitioner doesn't require you to believe or not to believe in any one practice or religion. So the threefold law is a Wiccan belief. Just understand that not every practitioner is Wiccan and not every practitioner holds this belief. Other question I get quite a lot is, is there a spell or is there a way that you can make somebody fall in love with you against their will? The short answer is no. Everybody has free will. It's not like in the craft or in all those other movies where they just like turn into zombies. But basically, you have to understand that this totally depends on the person. Some people are easier to influence than others. This can totally depend on how the person is just naturally or where they are as a person, as their own growth as a person in their life. People in high school, they're very impressionable. They want to you know, try out new things. So they allow things to influence them. Whereas people more in their 30s and 40s, they're more set in their ways. And I mean, this is a generalized idea. I'm not saying that like if you're 40, then you're just, there's no way you can change your mind. That's not what I'm saying. But you just have to understand that if you know somebody who is impressionable, that can also allow them to be easier influenced, not just by friend groups or by a job or by the environment they're in, but also by spell work. So if you want an example, if I had somebody in my life that I was really interested in and I didn't know if they were interested in me, I cast a love spell on them, then if their intentions were already that they found me attractive and wanted to be with me in a romantic and intimate way, most likely that influence would just strengthen that and they have the choice to act upon that. However, if I'm casting a spell, say on my friend Mystic Dylan, 
Believe me, he has no intentions to be with me in any intimate way. He's going to just end up being confused why suddenly being reminded of me all the time or why he's suddenly thinking about me every so often. And he's just going to be like, huh, that's weird. That is his choice. He He's going to be influenced by it, but that doesn't mean that he has to act on it. So long story short, no, can't really make anybody do anything against their will. I get this question a lot too. Somebody will come to me and say, hey, I'm really uncomfortable with casting spells on other people. Is there any kind of love spell that I'd be able to cast? Yes. And that's my favorite kind of love spell and as cheesy and as corny as, and as millennial-y as it may sound, casting self love spells are probably the most potent love spells of all. Come on, I mean, who doesn't want the like, confident person who like loves themselves and knows what they're worth. If you know your worth and you know where you stand, everything else is going to fall into place anyway. To be honest, casting self love spells is probably going to better your odds than trying to cast love spells externally onto other people around you. So there are so many different ways to do this, especially modern spell books. There's plenty of self love spells in there. You can do things like baths, meditations, or even little tiny boosts such as small glamours to boost your confidence or a specific aspect of yourself that you really find beautiful. Next question. I think someone cast a love spell on me. What do I do? The first things first, I'm assuming you probably don't want this person because if that is your idea, then you're probably like, why is this person in my head all the time? First things first is cleanse yourself. So there's plenty of ways to do this. I do have a video on cleansing. It's a quick basic crash course on cleansing. So cleansing yourself and your space, and sometimes, I mean, if this person is really sneaky, think about any kind of gifts that they might have given you. They might have cast a spell on that specific item. So if you want to keep the item, then I suggest cleansing it, but if not, maybe just get rid of it. If that really doesn't work, you feel like this person really has a hold on you, then try something called cord cutting. Cord cutting is basically a specific kind of spell that, that literally uses a cord, string, yarn. It's the physical act of cutting the thread and cutting the physical thread and the spiritual thread and emotional thread between you and another person. You would use a cord and you would meditate on it and you would think about the act the connections, all the different connections that you may have towards this person spiritually, intimately, romantically, physically, whatever. Then you're going to tie one knot and you're going to think about you as a separate person away from the relationship, away from that other person. You're going to tie another knot at the very end of the other end and you're going to think of that person as a separate person away from the situation. And then between those two knots, you can recite something, you can say a mantra, whatever you like, and you're just going to cut the cord between those two knots. Simple but effective. Like with any spell, the more energy you put into cutting that cord, the more effective the spell is going to be. Next, is there a spell I can do to get my ex back? Sure. People do spells like this all the time. But the real question is, is getting back together with that person really gonna do you any good? Is it gonna start you just at square one and have you guys fighting about the same exact fights and breaking up about the same exact reasons? I've just never seen a spell of getting an ex, lover, friend, whatever back. Um, I've never really seen that work out in the very end as a positive, but I'm not here to tell you how to live your life. All right, well, those are the most commonly and frequently asked questions that I get about love magic all the time. But like I said, short and sweet video today. I really appreciate that you all have been so patient with me of getting all of my videos out. It's been kind of overwhelming these past few weeks, just trying to catch back up and like figure out where I left off before I went and visited my family. But I will see you in the next video. And as always, best of luck. Wait a minute, wait. Now I have to do that YouTuber. Ugh. I have to do that YouTuber thing also and ask you to like the video because it actually really does help me and it's the easiest way to support me. As well as after subscribing, hit the notification bell. Yeah, I'm gonna be that YouTuber. But YouTube is bad at telling you when I upload new videos. So hit the notification bell so you know when I upload and uh, I think that's all. Is that all my YouTube stuff? Yeah, that's all my YouTube stuff. Okay, <laughs> well as always, I will see you in the next one. Best of luck, be kind to each other. And may your gods treat you as you've treated others. Bye.